going, Paul? What is going on? <laughs> that was the longest fucking horrible drive ever made. Oh. How, how come you're so late for your own interview? Oh, dude, I can't even explain it. My car is fucked up, and uh, just took a long time to drive to Kansas City. Gotcha. <laughs> and I got a late start. I woke up kind of late, so so you're, you're, you're copping to it. Yeah, it's you just... know. I wasn't expecting this right when it pulled up. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> So, you know, what, what does Slipknot mean to you, Paul? It's my life, you know, that's, that's it. It's everything, it's everything to me. You know, I mean, without Slipknot, I'd, I'd be probably sleeping on someone's couch working at the old bar I used to work at. You've been playing music since you were a kid, right? Yeah. So, I mean, is, is this what you kind of envisioned being a rock star would be like? I, you know, I had never knew what being a rock star would be like. You know, I, I still don't know, I mean, I, I, I I don't I don't really consider myself a rock star, but obviously I guess I am. I don't know, and you know, um, you know I still do the same shit, man. I go to the same fucking bar, you know, hang out with the same fucking people. You know what I mean? So it really hasn't changed that much, you know. I mean, except for now I can afford drinks. I can buy a few people drinks and, instead of uh, having to bum money every night. <laughs> right. Do you feel like like you're you're a different? guy when you're out there on the road with Slipknot than when you're kicking back at home in Iowa? Um, I don't feel like a different guy, no. I mean, I, when I'm home, I'm lazy. Uh, when I'm on the road, I'm lazy, except for when we're playing. So, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty much the same dude, you know? I mean, <laughs> fuck. I don't do shit. I really don't do shit, you know? I drink fucking beer and fucking sit around, you know, and, and play music. And that's what, that's what I've been doing this whole time off, too, you know? So... It's kind of, yeah, it's, I'm it's pretty much the same all the time. What does volume three mean in the grand scheme of the band, looking back on it? Uh, it, was, it was the rebirth of Slipknot, you know what I mean? It was like a, us coming back together, pushing out that vibe that had gotten in there and kind of started pulling people away, you know, and realizing that, you know, what fucking it's, you know, fuck all these outside people, let's get back together. But we, we figured out that, you know, we gotta, that we do have to get space, you know? We do need to let people be sometimes. Was there ever a time where you felt like the band is about to break up? Every, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, to be honest, there's been times, yeah, where I thought, I don't know if it's gonna happen, you know? And it was never anything, I mean, I've, I've never ever wanted to quit the band or leave the band, so I've always, it's always been, you know, worried about other people, if they were going to leave or do other things. And that's just, you know, whatever, instead of, you know. And we were still actually really solid. You know, I mean, I think it was just a lot of, a lot of people just kind of, you know, tripping out about different little small shit. And when we actually talk and got together, realized that, you know, everything else wasn't that big of a deal. It started, when it started out, it was just kind of a weird thing, you know. It started out with Sean, like, he had that, clown mask and wore it at practice one day and it just like it's just it was fucking creepy you know like the whole time he wouldn't take it off we're like dude you're fucking you know you can't tell what he's looking you know what he's thinking or like if he's smiling or what the fuck it's just always like this fucking thing it just freaked us out at practice we're like it's awesome you know we went on from there and uh it was kind of cool too back in the you know like cause back in the day you could uh do a show, we would do shows and we'd come back in without the mask. They wouldn't, people wouldn't even know, you know, we're in the band, right. tell us if we sucked or not, you know, we'd get honest answers, you know. Oh, that band fucking ruled, or that band was the worst band I've ever seen. Right. And then, you know, they would have no idea they were telling us that, you know, it's kind of cool. Do you think that Slipknot could have come out of anywhere else, or do you think that there's a specific kind of Iowa, Des Moines no, vibe? No, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely an Iowa thing. It, I, I know it is because, because of the, I mean, I mean, that's where we got our work, work ethic because fuck, no one wants to come, no a &R guy is going to come out here, you know, fucking dude, it was impossible to get anybody to come see a fucking show. Even, even Chicago, they were bitching about it, you know, like, fuck, going to Chicago was a pain in the ass, you know, it's like, you know, fucking Des Moines, there was no chance, you know, I was like, so we had to work and work and work, you know, and, and actually prove ourselves. So, and I think, you know, just the way people are brought up, I think our, you know, the people in the band, the, their values and uh, just their moral, you know, their just moral structure fucking made what this band is, you know? And so, yeah, I don't think it would have it worked in LA or New York or, 
wherever the fucking Seattle or London or fucking wherever the fuck bands come from. Right. You know, Iowa, that's it. <laughs> I can only speak for myself, but I mean, it's, to me, it's, it's just the, the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. And, you know, so there's no, you know, once, when we started the band, I felt it, you know, right when we started it and it still feels the same. So, you know, I mean, I, you know, I'm having time in my life. And you feel like it, like the band has pretty much stayed true to the original idea, original concept, and what you guys are trying to get across. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I mean, naturally we evolve too. You know, I mean, as a band, you're always going to evolve. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've always we've always stayed true. I mean, and by staying true, is we've always done what we wanted to do. You know, and that's that's staying true. Just you know, I don't know. You know, people might think, oh, this or that or whatever. You know, like. You know, if we do something different, if we, you know, write a song with some melody or if we, you know, fucking, I don't know, do something different with mass or not mass or whatever, you know, people are saying we're not staying true, but actually we are because it's fucking what we want to do. Right. And that's, you know, how we started this band, doing what we want to do and fuck everybody else's opinion. So, right. you're not so it's, yeah, it's staying true. You're not catering to somebody else's ideas of what Slipknot no. should be. <laughs> it's only ours, you know, and you know, everybody else can, you know, they can like it or hate it, we don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> Message to the fans, yeah, I mean, fuck. Thank you, you know, I mean, fuck. The, our fans are the greatest fans in the fucking world, you know, and like, and like you know, I, I'd do anything for them. And actually, I, I think our fans know that I would, you know, I mean, I literally have given the shirt off my back you know, for him, uh, because without them, you know, there would be none of this, you know what I mean? And, uh, so yeah, I mean, thank you. That's, that's, that's from the bottom of my heart, you know, that's the most I can give, you know, and, uh, you know, for all the support and everything and, you know, hope, you know, I mean, we promise we, we will try not to ever let them down, you know, can't please everybody, but, you know, we'll do what we can.